And then we have Leanne preaching. Give her a cheer. <laughs> Leanne, as you will know, is South African. And I think, is it in two weeks' time? Leinster are going to beat the Bulls. <laughs> is it in two weeks' time or is that just in a week's time? See, but the Bulls aren't my team, so that's okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They all say that. Have you noticed that about South Africans? Sorry, that's rugby talk. Thanks, Sean. Hey, everybody, family. It's really good to be back um, and sharing with you again today. Um, I don't know about you, but somehow this season is just running away with me, and I can't actually believe we're in June. It feels like yesterday that we were celebrating Easter and doing the Reset series, and yet here we are. But I think my favorite part of this time of the year is that the days get longer here in Ireland. I can't really say that they get warmer, but they do get brighter. Um, but it's also been cool to see how things are sort of getting back to normal. You know, like we have live rugby and we have uh, concerts and musicals to go to. But it's also been like a lot of series and stories that have come out that we could watch. And uh, I, for me, as an accountant, I love to escape the world and the stress by watching some of these stories. I often find I'm drawn to like detective based ones, so like NCIS or the Chicago franchise. And if I need a really good laugh, then it's the Golden Girls. Um, but this had me thinking like, could the Bible be binge worthy? And the correct answer or expected one is always, of course, right? And uh, for all the polite humans that nodded, thank you for that. But uh, that also, you know, I wondered, like, maybe the question I should ask is, would I binge on the Bible? And I do think series like The Chosen has made this easy, right? And for those of us who have watched it, um, it's a self-funded series which follows the story of Jesus in the New Testament. And that has made it a little easier. But it got me thinking as to why am I drawn to all these movies and series? Like, what pulls me in that makes me want to binge it? So starting, we're going to have the great story, which is the Bible. And when I thought about it, it felt like there are these four common threads, really, that pull you in. The first one is that there's a great battle between good and evil. So if we think of Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter or any of the Avengers movies, there's always this great story or battle that pulls us in because we want to know what happens. And the second one is then there's a hero who rescues the world. So Frodo, Harry, or any of the Avengers. My personal favorite would be the Hulk. Then you have the third one there. The hero makes a great personal sacrifice to win a great prize. So if we think in general in these stories, it's about you know, peace for people, making sure they're safe. It's for the greater good of mankind. And in the end, it's always the same. Things are as they should be. Good has outmaneuvered the bad or the evil. And these common factors, I feel, have drawn us in because it's a story that we've heard before. It's a story that echoes within us, almost like it's a continual retelling of the story of God and mankind, that God is telling us the story over and over without us even realizing it that it resonates because part of our lives and what we feel right now is similar to what's in these stories, in this battle that's drawing us in. And so in essence, God is telling his story through us every day, the God and mankind story. Now stick with me if you're not seeing it yet, and we're gonna unpack these four together. The first one being that there's a great battle between good and evil. Now, in the Bible, there's a verse here in Matthew 4.16 where it says, the people living in darkness have seen a great light. So just like in all those stories that, you know, those movies, in the Bible, these people are living in a darkness. Now, it, the, it speaks to not just living in darkness, but actually a realm of darkness and being under a ruler of darkness, which the Bible is, you know, specifically calls out as Satan. Now, the darkness in our stories had villains. So if we think of um, it's Sauron in Lord of the Rings, Voldemort in Harry Potter, and Ultron in the Avengers, 
Similarly, the Bible has their dark bad guy, which is Satan. And the Bible says that Satan prowls around like a lion, ready to devour. And then he seeks to steal, kill, and destroy, just like the villains in those stories. And in all the great stories, the villain always tries to pull people into his plan, if he can. And they become foot soldiers, sometimes without even realizing it. But in this version here, the darkness, the Greek word used for darkness, has two meanings. One of actual physical darkness, and the second one is a darkness of the heart, almost like evil. And in the biblical story, Satan tries to extend his darkness by making us believe that we can make those selfish choices, those choices of what's in it for me choices, regardless of the cost for anyone else. It's, he extends and roots it in this tempting us to make us think that we can decide for ourselves what is right and what is wrong. In essence, as if we're playing God. Now that's, you know, maybe you haven't thought of it that way, but if we think of darkness, that's always been the temptation. That you can be like God through the choices that you're making. Which if we think of the villains in these stories, they had evil plans and they put their needs before all of mankind, no matter the cost to anyone else. In some commentaries, it talks of this darkness as living in sin. So if we think of sin in terms of darkness, if push comes to shove, it's you and yours, regardless of the cost for anyone else, then that selfishness, that choice to be selfish, is just like the villains in the movies that we're drawn to. By using the term darkness, it also describes the impact that sin can have. And this made me think of when we were kids, we would go camping a lot in South Africa. And we camped one time in this really rural area called the Trans Sky, with no electricity, and you had your torch and the fire on the go. But if that was out, you could barely see your hand in front of your face. And that's the impact that sin can have. It puts you in this hole of regret, of you know, even pride, of shame. But sometimes sin in today's world isn't quite as black and white as the movies that we see. Sometimes it's a little more subtle in the form of, I'm going to tell this one little lie because that's not going to hurt anyone. But one little lie leads to another little lie until all you do is lie. I'm gonna sleep with this one person. And then the next one comes and you're like, I've already done it, so I'm just gonna keep doing this. Sin in today's world might not be as black and white as in the movies, but the consequence is just as dire. And so this is the darkness that the people in the Bible is living under. But it says that they have seen a great light, much like the possessed man in 1 Mark 24, where when he sees Jesus, he calls out and says, what do you want us with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. He has seen a great light, just like those people but not a particle of light like my torch made in the darkness. He has seen the power of the, another ruler. He has seen Jesus. Cue the inspiring music because we're about to meet the hero of the realm of light who wants to invade your realm of darkness and who can invade your realm of darkness today, whatever it may be. So just like in the movies that we are drawn to, the battlefield is set between good and bad, between light and dark. But in essence, it's between Jesus, which is good and blessing, and Satan, which is death and destruction. And that takes us to the second thread that we're always drawn to, which is the hero who's coming to save the world. Now, in the movies, it would be the likes of Frodo, Harry, and any of the Avengers. But as we've just seen in the Bible, this is Jesus. And it's, it's 
built up further for us by John the Baptist in 1 Mark 15, where he says, The time has come. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. He's saying the time has come because the King, Jesus, is here. Jesus is here to invade the realm of the kingdom of darkness, and he wants to come and rescue us out of this darkness. And this can even be the darkness that you find in your own heart. Could this be why we're drawn to these stories? Because somewhere in our lives, right now or in the past, we've needed rescuing. We've needed a hero to help us. And it's not just some flashy, suited out hero for that one moment in our lives. Jesus explains this to us a little bit more in John 10, where he explains how he is the good shepherd and he is the gate for the sheep. He tells that everyone that has come before has just come to steal, kill, and destroy. And if we think of a dark realm that we found ourselves in, it's not like Satan was lovingly holding your hand through the process. Satan comes and he promises you freedom, that you're free to decide how you're going to spend your time, how you're going to spend your money, who you're going to sleep with, and so on. It's all those empty promises that he makes that ends up leaving you with regret or emptiness, loneliness, and isolation. We just have to look at the world around us and see how many broken families and homes and societies there are, all in the pursuit of this freedom. But our hero is here today, telling us in John 10.10 10, that he has come so that we can have life to the full. Life to the full. That seems big. Like it's a real deal, big life issue. Like this means I can be who I was always made to be kind of deal. But what does living life to the full look like to you? For me, living life to the full means that the stress of my job can be laid at the feet of the Lord. That when the deadlines and the worry of doing a good job eats at me, I can put it at his feet and know that it's going to be okay. And that might sound insignificant when you look at the rest of the things going on in the world. But for me, stress steals my joy. It steals my sleep. It steals my time with my friends and my family. And knowing that there is a realm that I don't have to have that gives me hope. What would a full life look like for you? Think about this. We often jump to the concept of having a career or a family or a home, especially here in Dublin. But people had those things when Jesus said, I want to give you a life in full. Jesus talks about having peace and later a peace beyond understanding of having joy that is complete. Joy, not just happiness, joy. He speaks of content, being content regardless of your circumstances and that we can be in a community of mutual serving and care being free of guilt and shame, knowing God and being known by God. That is what Jesus is offering, and only he can offer that. Because we have a superhero stepping up to invade our darkness today. Because in reality, we as his sheep were never made to live in darkness. He is our way out. He wants to come invade your darkness today because he knows you by name. And if you listen, you will know his voice. See, in Matthew 18, Jesus, you know, if we had to contextualize, Jesus is talking about being the shepherd. And if we think of the time that this was written, the shepherds would be out with the sheep in the field for an extended period of time. And the wellness of the sheep is all on the shepherd. And he would know them by name. 
so they would know and be familiar with his voice. And that's why he's using this to say it. But even more than that, the shepherd, as it says here in Matthew 18, would leave the 99 to go find the one sheep that wandered off and got lost. And maybe you are that sheep today, not because you've run off, but because the realm of darkness that you find yourself in has you so drawn down that you can't see a way out. He wants to come invade your darkness today. You are never too lost to be found by Jesus. And I'm going to say that one more time for the people in the back. You are never too lost to be found by Jesus. And even for those of us who have known Jesus for a long time, it doesn't make us immune from being this lost sheep because Satan knows what buttons to push, what to tempt us with, and what lies to tell. Even if we've known Jesus for a long time, it's not going to stop sin from creating a realm of darkness that you live in. And we can find ourselves in seasons where the thief is stealing our joy, our peace, and our time with the Lord. Jesus wants to come invade your darkness today. You may be sitting there by now going, but why? Why am I part of this story? And why would the hero do this for me? Well, just like all the heroes in the movies, Jesus is called to this role. He came for a time like this. He was destined for it. But he had to make a personal sacrifice so that we could have this. And that's where we get to the next thread, where we see the hero needing to make a personal sacrifice for a great prize. Now, in our stories, um, you know, many of us know what Jesus has done with the sacrifice on the cross. And we did just have Easter. So we're familiar with that. But it's not just that. If we think of the movies that we're drawn to, it's that unwavering heart of the hero that pulls us in because it allows us to understand this great gesture that he's making. In the great story, Jesus is saying that he is the shepherd as we just heard now, and that we are the lost sheep, and, and that more than just finding that lost sheep, like it says in verse 13, um, in verse 13, that he is happier about that one sheep that he recovers than about the 99 that did not wander off. This is also confirmed for us in Hebrews 12, 2, where it says, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. This hero of ours has a greater calling, a purpose, just like Frodo, Harry, and the Avengers. There's a reason for the battle, missions, and sacrifices being made. But just like Frodo had Gandalf and Harry had Dumbledore, Jesus has the Father. And like it says in um, Matthew further, it goes, that in the same way, the Father won't let the sheep perish. I want to take poetic license and say, in the same way, the Father won't let the sheep be swallowed up in their darkness. And this is further explained to us in 2 Corinthians 5.21, where it says in the message version, in Christ, God put the wrong, so all of our sin, on him, Jesus, who never did anything wrong, so that we could be put right with God. Put right with God, meaning forgiven, able to access the Father. Cue the conquering music here. Do you see it? The hero who is destined by the Father to save all of mankind from their darkness is here. He comes and he never left. He came so that you can have life to the full. He laid down his life so that you don't have to. So to answer your question, why are you part of this great story? Because you are the prize. He wants you to live a life free of an addiction, anxiety, pride, sexual immorality, and of sin. 
because he loves you. And not just because it suits him today, because this was always part of his plan. This was said more than 2,000 years ago, before any of us were a twinkle in our forefathers' eyes. He knew you were coming and that you would be worth this sacrifice. And not just when you're an acceptable human. Even in your darkest moments, you are worth it. And I'm going to say that again for the back. Even in your darkest moments, you are worth it to Jesus. We're entering the end of our scene where everything always ends like it should be. The good has outmaneuvered the bad. And in our scenario, the light has outmaneuvered the darkness. And we see this emphasized for us in John 1, 5, where it says, The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. If we think back to my analogy of me with a torch while camping, when I put the torch on, I could see where I was going. The darkness could not stop the light of that torch. Think about that. Darkness can't stop the light. Darkness has no weapon or power to resist light. Jesus is so much more than that thin little stream of torchlight that we have. He is the ruler of the kingdom of God, where darkness has no place. Because of Jesus, we get to live with God for eternity starting now. Because of Jesus, we get to live in the kingdom of God in every single circumstance we find ourselves in. This means living a life where Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit get to be a part of your life. And just like John the Baptist was encouraging, I'm standing here today telling you that the kingdom of God is at hand. It's here right now. Review the way that you live. Review what you think a full life is. Because you have an opportunity for this life-changing opportunity to choose Jesus, to live a life in the kingdom of God. You have access to a supernatural hero who is supercharged by the Father and the Holy Spirit waiting to invade your darkness. If you've never experienced this before or thought of having access to a superhero, can I encourage you to invite Jesus, the hero, into your life today, into your situation? You might not know him, but he knows you by name. And he would leave everyone to make sure you are safe and with him. Some of you may be sitting there rolling your eyes slightly thinking, I've already done this, I'm fine. But I want to encourage you to think about if darkness is where we decide what is good and what is not, or what is right and what is wrong, This could be in what we watch on TV, how we spend our money, who we sleep with, um, and any relationships that we find ourselves in. Is there not space there to invite the hero into those places? Because if we think of those situations, and maybe others that pop to your mind, There are times where we intentionally choose to live in darkness. And that might sound harsh, but that might be just as true for everyone here. What does a full life to you really mean? And I want you to really think of that word full. And not only on a Sunday when everybody's looking or it's sunshine and roses, What about when you're drenched in the rain on a bicycle? Your colleagues are annoying you. You're stuck in traffic. You can't get a visa and everything's imploding. Is there space to let the hero in? Because he's waiting. He's here. He's ready to invade. We're privileged to live in a time where we have access to the full manuscript, the Bible. 
We know the story, but unless we're actually reading the full manuscript, we don't know the power and the knowledge that's waiting for us and that we have access to. Jesus came so that we could have life to the full, not half measures, not once in a blue moon, but every single day. Can you imagine that kind of life? That is a story I would like to be part of. Our hero came so that we could have life to the full, to live a life of freedom for anyone and all who want it. What does a life, a full life, look like to you? I just wanted to take a minute. When I was starting to prepare, I just felt that I was challenged about what full means to me because we don't take the time to really think what Jesus is offering. We get distracted by the darkness. We get distracted by our situation. So Jesus, I just want to encourage you or just to call out to him in your darkness and let him in. Let him invade. E, do you want to get your humans up? And then I think as we're worshiping, I just want to encourage you to be in that moment of what does a full life look like? Because Jesus is standing ready to invade your darkness.